Welcome everyone to this 2021 Track Day vlog. Now this year things are a little bit different. So this is a very important intro. So please bear with me. Now normally when you see my Track Day vlogs, I uh, vlog everything in detail, a lot of cinematography, a lot of other bikes I show you. I show you a lot of laps, then I show you chasing other people if there's a special bike like a Ducati V4R, me chasing them or, or you know, other things. This year I'm condensing everything down, but testing more parts. So giving something back to you guys. Uh, I test a lot of bits uh, here and there, and now I want to show you how everything fared, what to look out for. So let's keep it short and punchy. So let's talk about what I'm going to be talking in this video. Everything is going to be divided into different timelines in the timeline. So if you want to watch this video again and come back to your favorite bit, you can just, you know, flicker your mouse to that part and you can watch that bit. So let's talk about the first thing. First thing I'm going to talk about is noise testing and different baffles. Then we're going to be talking about rear sets and how that affected me and the racetrack. Then we're going to be talking about Brembo RCS uh, brake ratios, then we're going to be talking about the gearing ratios, and then EBC brake pads, EBC GP FAX pads versus the Brembo Z04 pads, how they are coming along. Then we're going to be talking about the Metzler TG slick compound tire, which I've been testing since end of last year. And then we're also going to be talking about my lap times, certain things I learned about from the uh, NASCAR video from uh, Mobidelli, how they helped me on this track, a lot of other crucial things. So please stay with me uh, on this video. And now I'm going to move the video to the track and do a proper intro. And then we're going to talk about everything in detail. Welcome back everyone to a very windy Snetterton, hence you see me wearing a mic with a bit of a muff. Uh, anyways, yeah, this is a very unexpected track day for me because I wasn't really planning to do this track day. So maybe I can actually say this is actually a sponsored track day by uh, Race Space Sport Homes. Ben Langton, who was uh, supposed to do this track day, he couldn't make it and uh, he's actually uh, given this track day to me for free. So massive thank you. And I thought I'll throw a, a little plug in for them. They don't really need any plug in because they do a fantastic job with uh, some amazing uh, space uh, kind of race sport homes uh, and all sorts. Anyways, I'm here at Snetterton. Oh, it's full of events. It's uh, in, we, we're about six people in the in our garage and everyone's got uh, issues. Now, this was a last minute thing for me. So I came here very late last night, like 11, 15 uh, in the night time and the main road was closed as well. So I took a, a country route and that was just, oh my goodness me. It's just when you've got a trailer and a, and a bike, uh, and you've got, um, you, you're on a country route which is full of bumps. Uh, you just think, oh my goodness, uh, are my ratchets going to hold? Anyways, I, I came here and it was like uh, two degrees centigrade and I was sleeping in the pit garage and I was absolutely freezing. But luckily, uh, thanks to Sainsbury's, uh, you know, I had an amazing uh, uh, kind of um, uh, inflatable mattress and, uh, and very warm um, um, uh, kind of blanket as well. So that did the job, but still it was very cold. I think I slept about three, four hours. Anyways, I'm here at Snetterton, had a few issues. So I'm going to go through uh, some issues with you uh, in a minute. Welcome back guys. So let's go through all the points which I mentioned in the intro in detail. So number one was noise testing. So I'm going to show you some GoPro footage in the morning. You need to excuse me here because in the morning the GoPro was just overexposed. Too much brightness. I don't know why. I have, I have no idea. I slept in the garage. It was one degree. I don't know if was it the cold or what. I no idea. But later on it just sorted itself out absolutely fine. So noise testing. If you've got an Aprilia RSV4 or an Aprilia RSV4 RF or a Tuono, if you've got a, a crop of it slip on, which a lot of people have, and you've got a small baffle, you're going to be fine. One or two decibel every time at 5000 RPM, you're going to be okay. If you've got a Ducati V4, oh, by the way, if you've got the longer baffle, it's going to be 100 decibel or 99 decibel. So that's the longer baffle with that same a crop of it slip on. And if you've got a Ducati V4 Panigale, S or normal or 
or are, if you've got those tailor-made Piper Works baffles, which are about 50, 60 pounds, you're going to be around 105 decibels and the track day companies are okay with them, with the Ducati V4s. I always say to people, don't, you know, get your baffles fitted properly before the racetrack to make sure they fit properly because baffles go out flying if you're just going to do some really rubbish job yourself or just going to buy a baffle which doesn't fit on your bike. So please guys, just, just mindful of uh, other people on the track. So just don't just get a baffle in just for the sake of it. Make sure it fits and screws in properly. Anyways, next we move on to Yamaha. Yamaha people, if you've got that uh, Akropovich silver uh, titanium uh, slip-on, if you've got a baffle in, you're going to be fine. 5,000 revs to uh, one or two decibels. And if you haven't got that, if you've got the earlier version of the Akropovich, which never came with the baffle, you've had it. It's, uh, it's I think it's around 109, 108 decibels, around 5,000 uh, decibels. Obviously, these figures uh, can differ if your bike is hot and cold or all sorts. So just an indicative um, kind of decibel figures I'm giving you. Uh, Ducati guys are okay if they have these tailor-made uh, kind of um, baffles. Okay, let's move on to rear sets now. Okay, you're going to be saying why is he talking about rear sets because he did a half an hour video not too long ago about rear sets. Yes, I did that and I've got these new extreme components rear sets which are absolutely brilliant. But what I really want to tell you um, in this clip is in the morning, I, let me show you footage actually, excuse the over brightness, uh, you just listen to it. You just have to listen to what the bike is going through and then I'll tell you what happened. happening basically is we tightened the rear sets too much the shift rod was too tight so the rear set kept thinking that it's time to move up a gear when it wasn't so basically these are the rear sets uh, from extreme components fantastic but we've just um, left no slack here whatsoever no they were, they were absolutely no slack now you can see there's a bit of slack before in the morning it was uh, quite rigid so what was happening is um, the second and third gear we're just kind of uh, getting a bit confused as if you've got your foot on top and is thinking all the time that you're about to change the gear. So that was a bit of an issue, but slightly loosening this nut and that nut made all the difference. So I came back into the pits, I loosened that track. And you know what, this is gonna mention something very important about mindset and positivity here. Normally, when something like this happens, I come back to the pits, and I'm like, oh my God, my luck, what's happened, my life, everything. And luckily, we didn't have any, uh, we all were uh, five Aprilias and one Ducati in the garage. So there was no one to say, should have bought a Honda, guys, should have bought a Japanese bike. So there was no one to say that. So there was no negativity in, uh, in the garage. So I just came back and I thought to myself, you know what, let's calm down. Let's see what's happening. I'm not putting my, uh, my foot on the uh, gear lever. Why is the bike doing that? So I think I just guessed it. Um, and, uh, you know, big thank you to Shannon Moore who helped me uh, with loosening the, the, um, the little shift rod. As soon as I loosened that a bit, the bike was absolutely beautiful. There was no blip, blipping issue was gone and the gears were, were you know, um, changing smoothly. And the rear sets were absolutely amazing. The, the grip you get on these extreme components rear sets are absolutely brilliant if you are looking for some rear sets you can get 15 percent discount on these you know there's a link in the description and i'll there's a full video on them as well which i did i'll leave a link in the description as well okay let's move on to the next part so next we're going to talk about is brembo rcs and different ratios so if you've got a brembo rcs you've got a ratio between i don't know 17 rcs you've got 18 to 20 rcs and how that affects uh, so now I normally keep it on the most aggressive setting because I like my biting point to be immediate, absolutely lethal, super on, and I'm just happy with that. I unfortunately had it on 18, and you know what? I had never chained that before, and my goodness, the amount of difference it makes is unbelievable. With the 18, it's a little bit uh, more progressive, less dynamic. With the RCS 19 or 20 setting, it's very grabby, immediate uh, braking, and I didn't know that. So when I came back after first or second session, I was realizing it was a lot spongier. So then I thought, again, negativity, we're trying to grab, is it, have I got air in the system? What's happening? No, I then looked into my RCS properly and I then changed 
the setting from 18 to 20 and it was feeling much better afterwards. I think I changed it to 18. I was trying to make a video about Brembo RCS a few weeks ago, which I abandoned in the middle. So the setting was at 18. Otherwise, I always kept it at 20. So guys, here again, if you've got a Brembo RCS and you don't play around with the setting, you must do if you're not happy with your braking before even you delete ABS or before you buy new calipers or new pads, play around the settings you've got, you know, a good rider never blames his tools. He plays around with the tools and then sees how they uh, come along. So always try to do 18 RCS, 19, 20 ratio. See what suits you or with some, always consult Brembo to see what RCS uh, or what uh, master cylinder in general, Hell or whatever company suits your um, uh, caliper and then take it from there. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Okay, let's show you a lap. I don't want to just show you a lap at the end. Let's show you a lap in the middle of the video and then we'll talk about the other points. So I think this was a, I don't know, 2 minute 13 or a 14 lap and um, I was struggling to really get into the 2 minute 10s, which I'm really disappointed, but it was the first track day of the year, few issues with the bike, but still, still you know, I was really struggling to get in um, uh, below 2 minute 10, which I am disappointed, but it was my first proper time on the track, the first time I was on the track, I did one session, uh, did the noise, one session, three laps, uh, sighting laps, came in for noise testing, went out, crashed. And so this was my first proper time. So I think it's a 2 minute 13 or a 14. Have a look, one lap uh, of the Snetterton circuit, and then we'll move on to the other topics. <laughs> Welcome back, and if some of you don't know, it's a very fast circuit uh, towards the east of England. Very fast circuit, and uh, 
you know, and lap times here are over two minutes normally, uh, even if you are in a, in a fast group. If you are super rapid, then you will be under two minutes. Uh, you know, the pits and everything, if I show you very gently, my gimbal isn't working today because uh, everything was in a hurry and I've just got everything handheld, so hopefully there's not much shake. The pits are very kind of basic, uh, but they are very functional. They've got everything you need, unlike Silverstone, uh, you know, they are on a smaller scale, but to be honest, it's absolutely fabulous. It's a brilliant track, uh, you know, it's the, the, the straight, you know, you can hit the similar kind of straight speeds uh, the way you do at Silverstone as well. So it's a great track there, and I really love this, uh, this telephone booth in the middle of nowhere. So if you are watching from America, you would actually love this quite a lot, because that is a London-style telephone booth in the middle of uh, the start-finish straight. So, uh, that's something uh, very new. Next part is gearing. Now, this is something I've been playing around since last year. So I've got an Aprilia RSV4 RF with a, I think normally they come with a 1642. Now that was a bit long geared. I've done a proper video on gearing. It's only a three minute video, I think. I'll leave a link in the description uh, about how gearing affects front and back. Now I've been running 1644 last year, 16 front, 44 rear last year. And that was a little bit too aggressive in terms of I was constantly changing gears before and after turn-ins. Now, here's something I really, really want to tell you. If you've got a blipper and a kind of quick shifter, it's okay. But if you change the gears without them, you don't want to unsettle the bike too much before a turn. If you can keep your gears uh, positioning suited to you, so you don't want to change your gears too much and unsettle the bike. And remember, don't overdo it. It's not like... You know, I always compare this to like, you know, men, when we have protein shakes after a gym or something, we'll, uh, I will just put an extra scoop. Don't go an extra tooth just for the sake of it. It makes a huge difference. Let me tell you, from 1644 to a 1643, one tooth change on the rear, not front, because when you change one tooth in the front, it affects like two in the rear. So one tooth change in the rear made a big difference. So just be progressive because any progressive changes in your sprocket dynamically affects your bike big time. Okay, another very important topic, brake pads, and let's compare the Brembo Z04 pads to the EBC GP FAX pads I've been using lately and last year. Now, let me tell you, I have had no complaints by, from Brembo Z04 pads. I just changed them because the price difference is a bit, and I thought, let's see how the uh, EBC pads compare. Now, I spoke to Bike HPS last year. I love Bike HPS. They've helped me before on a video weighing some wheels. If you remember that video, you know, I just, uh, you know, they, they did that gesture during COVID times, a first lockdown, and I'm so grateful to them. Anyways, so Bike HPS sell these and they said, why don't you try some and, and see what you, uh, how, how you, you get along with them. And I used them last year at Silverstone. Last session, uh, I thought, you know what, let's put some uh, new pads on and see how I get along. I went three and a half seconds quicker. So I moved to these EBC uh, GPFAX pads, and I have no issues. The biting point is fantastic. The wear is good. I'm still going through a wear, still on my first pad, but I've done Silverstone one session. I've done half a day at Donington. I've done half a day at Brands Hatch, and I've done a full day at Snetterton, and there's still some life left, so it's not bad at all. And Brembo ZF4s were fantastic as well with life as well. The only thing I would say about the EBC GPFAX pads that they leave a powdery residue on the front wheel. So I've got carbon wheels, and at one point, I couldn't even see my carbon weave on the front wheel because the residue, and to be honest, you, you can blow away this residue. It's, it's no big deal. So price is pretty good of these EBC pads, and I have no complaints. Comparing them to Z4 pads is fantastic. There's no, I have no complaints with Brembo. I have no complaints with uh, EBC. Okay, let's talk about the Metzler TD Slick Compound Tire. A lot of you are interested in knowing about this. You message me a lot about this after my detailed video, which I'll leave a link in the description. I absolutely adore this tire. Uh, you know, I have no complaints. I've tried Pirelli SC0, SC1, SC2. I've tried VO2s. I've tried Dunlop Chaos. I've tried all sorts of slicks, Super Corsas, uh, you know, Comp K, Metzler, the K3RR and the K2RR Metzler. I've tried all of them. I really love this tire. The pricing is fantastic. No cold tears. The temperature was low. So I used this tire at low temperature last year in September, August. Uh, at Donington, it was very nippy last year as well. And this year, this morning, it was uh, at Snetterton, it was very cold, very windy. 
There, there was no cold tears, no blistering, no uneven wear. It was absolutely brilliant. I have no complaints with the pricing. I have no complaints with the performance. I even took the piss at certain points with this tire just to see how much movement it causes me coming out of slow corners. It can, can it still take it the way, say, a super soft at a good ambient temperature, apparently SC0 can do or SC2, you know, and um, compared to those tires, this tire, and a lot of people think this tire is for intermediates or novice who people are moving from uh, a, a treaded tire to this one. No, it's not. You know, they, I've seen people racing on these tires. You know, they are fantastic. Uh, they, and also, Metzler even say that you don't need tire roamers for this one. I massively debate this because I always say to everyone, put tire roamers on, even if you've got Super Corsas, Metzler K3, K2, any slick, you need to put super, uh, you need to put warmers on because you want to be able to give everything you've got straight away coming out of the pits and you don't want to be warming your tires up for two, three laps. Someone could be gunning and they could hit you. Just you don't want to be wasting time. Just put warmers on, you know, stress-free. There's no issues and go. Uh, this tire warms up pretty good. If you are scared that you're not able to maintain heat in your tires, don't worry. This tire is absolutely fantastic. A detailed video I've done on this tire, link is in the description. You will have all the information there as well. Okay, hope you like that. Let's talk about my lap time and performance. So I was, uh, the best thing about that day, okay, it was my first time there properly, a full day. My last time I crashed in the first session, pointless. Anyways, I was consistent. And that is one thing I take away from that track day. 2 minute 12, 2 minute 13, 2 minute 13, 2 minute 13, 2 minute 12, 2 minute 14. That was my last, um, last uh, session. And this is the important part, my last session. I always sometimes come back early if I'm fatigued in the middle of the day to save my energy and concentration and that determination for the last session. Now, I always say to you, make sure your bike's ergonomics, your leverage of your clip-ons and your, your rear sets, everything is perfectly set up for you. So you are not getting knackered by your own bike. You know, then comes fitness, then comes drinking water a week before, regularly before the track day, not having alcohol before the track day and not having energy drinks on the racetrack uh, and before as well. They'll just, uh, you, know, you know, tie you up in knots for no reason. Anyway, so the good thing I take away from this racetrack is I was consistent. I am not happy with 2 minute 12 at all. I thought I was 2 minute 9. I thought I was quicker, but I wasn't. So where do we go from here? So let's show you the 2 minute 12 lap time first. And then I'll tell you, tell you what we're going to do.
something like that. So what we're we gonna do from now? Um, so as you could t tell, that was kind of the best I could do that day, um, the two minute twelve. Now the best thing about I love, I am very lucky to be living in this amazing country. You know, I respect UK so much. We have some amazing race tracks. We have some amazing venues. We have an amazing motorsport background. But most importantly, what we have is the the coaching help out there. We've got people like Dean Ellison. We've got people like Mike the Spike Edwards. We've got uh, not so fast Gary Walton uh, chap. We've got uh, Dale Sykes. We've got loads of coaches in this country. And you can actually send, it might cost you sometimes, and you can send your footage to them and they can coach you. And they can coach you online. They, you know, we are living in tough times at the moment, COVID and all. So you can get online coach. So that's what I'm going to do. You know, when we are ri driving on the road, we need a license so we get coached. The same way with the road biking, we need a license so we get coached. But when we go on the racetrack, we just think we know everything. We hardly get coaching, um, you know, sometimes. And uh, I think it's so important to get coaching when you are helpless, when you are thinking, I'm doing everything, but I'm not getting to that uh, time or, or, or getting to that personal satisfaction where I really want to be. And it's not all about lap times. Sometimes it's all about having fun. And I did have a lot of fun. I didn't have a crash. But also for progressive improvement you need to know where you stand and what mistakes you are doing and what bad habits you've got and most importantly how, how you can correct them so I'm going to send my footage to any of these people and see what they come back with and we'll take it from there so uh, anyways guys thank you for watching this video I hope I kept it short I really wanted to keep it under 20 minutes I hope I've done that uh, but yeah, tomorrow is Silver Sun. It's beautiful. It's a Sunday today. It's lovely and sunny. And it's going to be lovely and sunny on Tuesday. But bank holiday Monday tomorrow is rainy Silver Sun. It's going to be cold. So I hope the rain gods um, keep it dry. Uh, but yeah, look after yourself. And like I always say in my videos, we are living in some tough times with this COVID and stuff. Look after people around you. There's a, peop a lot of people going through some mental turmoil uh, with all sorts. So listen more. And, you know, watch out for people who are going through some tough time and just put an arm around them and just look after them. Um, I've also launched my website. So do check it out in the description. A lot of you ask for some merchandise. And I've also got some quirky track day slogans on those T-shirts. I spent a day thinking about some some stuff. And you know what? In the comment section, tell me some nice quirky slogans i can put on t-shirts so i can put that on my uh you know i just thought about that now yeah in the comment section tell me some nice quirky like oh will it fit in a caddy something like this uh put some slogans in the comment section so i'll put them on the t-shirt and i think the t-shirts are uh, t-shirts are about 20 pound including vat um so yeah check out my website you'll find that interesting as well look after yourself guys take care see you bye